Welcome LPS students to part two of the crossword assignment. So part two, we will be writing the shared letters function that will take in two strings and determine which characters between these two strings um, are matching. And it will store all those matching characters in a string called shared letters, and it will return it to us. And so far what we've done is we've made our 2D data structure a vector containing vectors of strings, which is essentially just an array of array of strings. So you can think of it as one big array that contains a number of 643 arrays and inside of each one of those arrays are 643 elements and in each single one of those elements will contain all the shared letters between word number one compared to word number two compared to word number one and three word number one all the way compared to 643 and so we ran the sorting algorithm for our word list, and now what we need to do is we need to populate our crossword puzzle with the shared letters for each word. So we're close to the end, actually. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write that shared letters function. So what this is going to do is it's going to compare two strings and look for all the common characters between those two strings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a string called shared letters, and this is the string that we're going to be returning at the end of the function. All right, and then we're going to declare a second string called common letters, and this will basically um, keep track of the. This actually will be a character. We could use a character or a string. Uh, I'm going to keep it as a string, but it will look at the common letter. Um, between two strings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a for loop that compares each letter in string S1 to the letters in S2. So we're using two for loops um, and let's start with looking at S1. So we can basically create a index variable i and we want it to search until the length of s1 so we're going to use s1 dot length and we can do that because we've included the string library so we can use this length method and this will return the total number of characters in a string so for example for the string dog dog dot length would return three great and then we're going to make another loop so we can call this one j, and this is going to look throughout the length of s2. Perfecto. So I'm going to copy in these comments really quick. And what we want to do is we're going to compare the letters in each string. And I say lowercase letters because some of the words in the word list have for example, Gothic will have a um, uppercase G, and that will not match a lowercase G. So we're going to make sure we're comparing only lowercase letters. So we want to see if the lowercase value, so this lowercase um, is a function inside of the string library. So we're going to make the character for S1 at index i. So that will take out the ith letter of S1. So we're going to say S1 at i. So that will this taken together will return the character at the ith, the ith character in string S1, and it will make sure it's in lowercase. And we want to see if this is equivalent to S2 at J. 
so s2 so lowercase of s2 at j so this will compare all of the characters in string one to all of the characters in string two and what happens if we find a common character between two strings. So we'll want to do two things. First is we want to keep track of whatever that character was. So we want to keep track of S1 at I or S2 at J. It doesn't matter which. Um, if we use S1 at I or S2 at J in order to get the letter, let's just use S1 at I. So this will return us a character but I'm going to assign this to the common letter. So this will be common letter equals S1 at I. Great. And then the next thing we'll want to do is we want to keep a running total of all of those common letters. So um, we want to add whatever letter we just found in common to some running total, like a, a, a collection of characters that will be all the shared letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this method called append. And what that does is it adds a character to a string. So we're going to append the common letter to the shared letter string. So shared letters dot append the common letter. And one thing is we need to initialize both these two empty strings. Great, so when we append the common letter, it will add it to an empty string of shared letters. And then by the time that we compare the two strings and look at every single character in string one against every character in string two, we will have all the common letters appended to the shared letters string, which we return at the end of the function. So this is the shared letters function. It's actually not too bad. It just involves doing a whole lot of um, string library methods, like knowing the length, using lowercase, how to get a character at a certain uh, location in a string. So string at whatever um, character we're interested in, in looking at, and then this append method, which will add a character to the shared letter string. Great, so now that we have the shared letters function written, we can go find all the shared letters in our word list. So after we ran our selection sort, we can compare each word in the word array against every other word, and then run the shared letters function, which will return a string of the shared letters. So um, let's get started. We're going to need to use a for loop in order to compare each word. So int i equals 0 up until size. OK, so this will iterate through the word list at index i. But we need to look, um, we need to compare each word at a certain index with every other word inside the word list. So we're going to need to use a comparison index again. So int comparison index equals zero. Well, oh, sorry, comparison index is the next element in the word list. So i plus one, comparison index while less than size, and then we'll add one to comparison index. Great. So now I'm going to copy in these comments into the nested for loop structure. OK, so what we want to do here is we're looking at a single word at index i, and we're comparing this word to every other word in the word or uh, the string array called words. So. What we want to do is we want to pass in the word at index i and the word at comparison index into our shared letters function. So um, 
we will create a string called result and we can assign this to um, calling shared letters on the word at index i and the word at comparison index. And that will return a string of all the shared characters between these two um, strings. Um, and finally, what we need to do is we need to put the result in our vector, the crossword. So this guy, which is a two, you can think of it as a two dimensional array of strings. So again, like this illustration, it contains arrays of strings in each index. So where do we want to put this result in the 2D array called crossword? So we can access it um, basically using similar notation as an array, but it's a 2D array in a certain way. So we're going to use two brackets. So for example, if we're trying to access the shared letters for the zeroth word or the zeroth string in the word um, array. We could put in a zero here. And if we wanted to see what shared letters the word at word zero has with, let's say, the word at 643, we could put 643. So what that would do is we'll return the shared letters between, let's say, we can actually see, it would be assaged, that word, and the very last word, acquiescence. So that will return all the shared letters between those two words. Well, actually, you, yeah. It's a little bit different than that since we're sorting the words first in descending order, but for the purpose of explaining how um, accessing the 2D array or the vector cr called crossword, this same rule applies, where the first index will correspond which um, array that we want to look at. So this will contain the array of shared letters for the first letter in the crossword puzzle. Um, so if we're comparing the word at i, we're going to want to store, whoops, we're going to want to store in the index representing, sorry, so if we're trying to store all the shared letters for a certain word at index i, we're going to want to put it in the array corresponding to that word at i. And then we're look, looking through this comparison index, and that's going to compare this word at i to all the other words in our word list. So we're going to want to use the comparison index for our second index in the crossword. So crossword at i and comparison index. And we want to assign the result to this location at i in comparison index. So it's essentially like putting an element this would be i, this would represent i, and then the comparison index would represent which uh, index within this array to put it at. So let's say this would be i of 0, and then for the comparison index, let's say i of 2, and we'd store something in there. So this will, i will determine which array we want to look into. So whether this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, and then comparison index will determine which location, which index inside of that array we want to put the shared letters in. All right, and then finally, what I'd recommend doing is um, test to see your code works by outputting the result. Um, your console. 
And this should create basically the sequence of all the shared letters for um, the words in your cross list or your crossword puzzle like this in your console. So finally, you'll want to return zero at the end of your main function. And that is the crossword assignment in a nutshell. So um, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.